Adrenaline Fitness and Showcase Sports presents Three Rounds with Dan Russellman. Today on Three Rounds, our guest is Hamilton track coach Jeff Day. You know, I want to ask him what his favorite day is. It's got to be Jeff Day. <laughs> Well, that's funny, but you know what's not funny is Jeff's record as a coach. I mean, he started the indoor program very successful. He's gotten their outdoor tracks in the spring to where it's one of the best programs in South Jersey, and they're coming off a really outstanding year. Awesome. Well, it should be a great show. We'll see you back for round two. Looking to buy or sell your home? Buy with Burn. Sell with Burn. Eight five six five two four two nine two seven. Call Dave Burnbaum for all your real estate needs. We're back for round two, and our guest is Hamilton track and field coach Jeff Day. Coach, how are you feeling? Great. Uh, you know, first question is, with, with the Hamilton track team, is every day Jeff Day? Uh, every day, all day. Every day, all day? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be kind of upsetting if it wasn't. That's true. Okay. Um, in investigative journalism, we uncover you know, some unanswered questions. And for you, the, the question that is, is, what happens to kids who miss the bus going to a meet? Uh, kids that miss the bus, they get left behind and... We move on through the rest of the day. My understanding is some of them find their own way. Uh, occasionally some try to find their own way. I did speak to <laughs> one in particular who uh, mentioned a nice road trip he had to make last year when he uh, missed the bus. Oh, that could have happened. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll, I'll, I'll let you decide who that was. <laughs> okay. um, and, and we did a deep dive into social media and we uncovered the photo online. <laughs> uh, can you give us a little uh, context as to what this event was all about? Sure. Actually, it was uh, Halloween, and it was my wife's uh, cousin's band was playing out in like Lancaster, so we went out there. Obviously, it was not a couple uh, costume. The two did not go well at all, but they had a good time. Got that golden sombrero going on. I definitely on. had a great sombrero going on. Big on the Halloween? Uh, it used to be. Now, you know, getting older, well, not so much. Not so much. Oh, come on, it's a fun holiday. It is. Always falls on a school night, though, so the happy company. Not, not always. Not I mean, always, there, there, are some, there are some 31sts that fall on the weekend, <laughs> you know, true. every five or six years. True, good yeah. point. Now, our new, uh, new plan is instead of going out, now we watch The Crow. Okay. Uh, going back to throwing it back to the 90s there, so oh. that's normally our, our go to move now. Oh, 90s movies. 90s movies. That's a good one. Uh, you guys, I mean, will kill it on the track. Real good spring season, especially you know, the throwers. Yep. I think and some of your sprinters did well. I mean, Aaron Mull, those kind of guys. I mean, what. What's the key to the consistency, and how do you keep that success going and going? Um, honestly, I think that that all kicks back to the start of the winter season this year. Um, the, the previous year, we had some bumps in the road that were going on, and we decided to kind of address it. We wanted to get at it right away. We wanted to make sure we were staying super positive this year and keep rolling with that. And uh, one of the big keys to that, too, was I told everybody, every meet, is that meet at that time once we go past that mm -hmm. we move on to something else so if it was a bad day it was a great day that's enjoy it or you know cry about it but then we move on we keep on going and that really kind of pushed everybody to do what they needed to do um this past year the juniors and seniors were amazing that they had they had other plans that they didn't keep me in the loop with which was great because it turned out to be what we mm -hmm. ended up doing but you know, big goal, big goals of trying to like win counties and win yeah. conferences and stuff like that. So having you know, that push from them, that inherent push, was just great. Was it surprised to you how successful you guys were? Um, it was. Uh, there was. I knew we were going to have success. I didn't think we were going to have as much success as we did, uh, which was amazing. We had some new people come in. We also had some uh, some veterans that were around that just kind of stepped up. That, wasn't really expected to, that ended up doing it, which was amazing. Uh, but our first meet at Oakcrest, yeah, I think uh, it's, I made it very public out there. That was the first time in 35 years that Hamilton ever beat Oakcrest. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the meet, the coach came up to me and said, are you ready to take on everybody and, and slay the dragon and beat everything? Are we talking about this is the first meet? And he was like, no, everyone's been talking. You guys are the, the team that's out there. And I was like, news to me, I didn't know, because I'm always just nervous of looking at other mm -hmm. stats and everything else that's mm -hmm. there and think that there's... You know, I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop, someone get hurt, or something like that to happen. And you, you have some guys take some big jumps when Anthony yeah. throw them. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even going to attempt the last name. I'm sure you know how to say it. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he, I know uh, how to spell it. There you go. So, That's yeah. good. Um, yeah. He, uh, you know, talking about throwing big leap, too. I think, uh, I don't know if you heard the story about him at Meet of Champions. Yes. Yeah throwing and somehow hooking it and hitting a police car. You know, that was a special day there. That really got everyone's attention. And then came right back and had that huge monster throw. Um, the shot's been great for him, too. Yeah. And then, you know, 
Christian being what he's been doing mm-hmm. and, and keeps on grinding at it and pushing through with everything. Uh, Gabe helping out too has been great. Yeah. And you guys are going to have a coaching vacancy. I mean, Mrs. Coach is moving on. That's true. To, uh, I don't necessarily want to say greener pastures, but, <laughs> but, but, but a new opportunity for her. New opportunity. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, she is, uh, you know, not to quote, um, remember the Titans, but, you know, she's a person that can't really be replaced. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. uh, she helped instill a lot of philosophies and everything that are in there. And having her leave is a whole, um, but we're going to find ways to try to push through it and just, you know, new new approaches. And what's it going to be like for you not having her on the staff, you know, professionally and, and kind of personally? I mean, she's been with you the whole time. She has been. Um, it's going to be weird not having her around all the time with everything, but the good thing is she's still in the house. Mm-hmm. And we talk about them. Um, and she knows uh, that I'm going to still pick her mind with different things, and she's going to be there to, to talk me off the ledge when I start going too far. I mean, Right at the end of this year or during the summer, I started looking at things and already making predictions for next year. And she's like, what are you doing? We haven't even gotten the schedule yet. Mm-hmm. So um, she's always going to be that constant support for me and that yeah. rock for me. So even though she's not there for the kids, she's still going to reach out. She it helps out with a lot of the social media and everything, too, which is helpful. And I know, I know some people know, some people don't. You know, uh, you're a big surf guy. Yeah, that's true. Where, where are you finding the best waves in Jersey? Uh, well, I, my, my home place that I like going a lot is out the Ventnor Pier. Okay. Um, you know, great. Uh, normally it's not overly packed or anything. The only thing you have to worry about is there's been a few times hurricane wise, I've kind of crashed into the pier, had, uh, people fishing, wrap, fishing line around my neck. So those are, <laughs> yeah, not the best. Well, I was going to ask you, a couple, couple weeks ago we had the storm come through and the yeah. waves were pretty, yep. Pretty, pretty nice waves out there. I figured yeah. I was going to ask you, you get, get out there? And... I was out there. Uh, it was great until my buddy thought he saw a shark and didn't tell me that there was a shark and took off on me. It turns out it was a dolphin that we're swimming. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, they're yeah. Hanging with the times. dolphins. Hanging with the dolphins. It's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little close <laughs> encounter? But, uh, a little closer than I'd like to, but I've learned <laughs> the curve of the fin kind of helps with knowing it's not a shark. And, and I know you were excited about the Olympics. I mean, do, do, do you use that as, as inspiration as a coach? Absolutely. Um, on my remind, I was constantly sending out messages mm-hmm. about what was going on. Um, I think one of the things, and I, I've been very open with it too, is that one of our weaknesses in the past few years has been our distance. Mm-hmm. We have great guys that are coming out there working hard, but they, they're just not hitting the level that we yeah. want. But they've been getting better and better each year, which has been great. Um, American, the American men especially did amazing in the, the Olympics this year with the distance. They came through like right at the last second and really like really just a, just the big dominant move Absolutely. for a lot of things. Um, the distance guys are all fired up with it. They, they're looking at different strategies and different race strategies, mm-hmm. which is great to see. Um, one of the things with it that I was using as a learning tool for it too is uh, you had some of those distance guys that were sitting in the back, yeah. and then they just kind of slowly started working their way up. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these times, uh, high school kids want to start off right in the front. Well, yeah. You don't have to be there. You can kind of take your time to get around. Uh, but, yeah, no, easy all the time. The, the sprinters love seeing everything. The uh, throwers, everybody knows all the big names of mm-hmm. what, what they want to see. Absolutely. And then all of us at Hamilton, I think, are big uh, supporters of the pole voter motto. You uh-huh. know, um, he's from he pole vaults for Sweden, mm-hmm. but, yep. you know, Absolutely. The things he does is just too amazing. Well, okay. Well, spe- speaking of the Olympics, you know, you and I are going to compete for medal counts. Uh, yeah. We've got our challenge coming up in round three, and that's coming up. We'll be right back. Cool. Frustrated and confused when it comes to your child's education? I needed that burden lifted from me. I needed a lifeline. Huntington was that lifeline. I know my child's future is bright. Huntington gets results. 1-800-CAN-LEARN. We're back for round three with Jeff and Dan competing for the medal count. These medals are made out of Reese's. Guys, you have two minutes to eat as many as you can. You have to unwrap them. At the end of the two minutes, when the whistle is blown,
over here for happy and DQ over here for unopened, and this one just mutilated. All right, now to the real count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this side. And bam, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have a tie? We might. We're back with our final medal count, and we have a tie. Jeff, Dan, congratulations, you are both winners today. Thanks for watching Three Rounds with Dan Russellman. See you at the next one. Hey. You guys tie. They, 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 they were hard to open because they were sort of like half melting.